Welcome back to Ferocious City Nation. This is that. Today I'm going to be talking about HMHC. So I'm going to go through technical analysis and then news. I'm going to basically talk through what I think about this company, uh, information available, uh, next catalyst coming up, and how I'll play it. Now, uh, without further ado, make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow. Subscribe and turn your notifications on to get the latest out of videos. And let's jump right into it. So, first, technical analysis, and we get to see on the one month, one day. Uh, an 80x here that shows a little bit of uh, strength still a 40 it hasn't dipped so that is still a definitely a nice hold the willing percent r is still sitting at oversold so that is a good uh, position to be in that momentum it did lose a little bit of momentum and that's mainly due to uh the earnings that was recently put out uh even though that was still around the ninth uh still had a bit of an effect that still resonated with other people um that also caused the MACD to turn around negative, so we need to look a little bit into the one-hour perspective. Uh, although the stock is in the trading action zone, where reversals are likely between the 10 SMA and the 30 EMA, the stock is still above the 50 SMA in purple here, but the stock is still under the 200 SMA. Now, it's getting closer towards where the 200 SMA is, or, or to rephrase, 200 SMA is getting closer here in blue, uh, but that's still... Uh, looks overall somewhat bullish with a little bit of a warning sign here we need to look a little bit into the one hour perspective so looking into the one hour perspective what we're trying to look for here is a sign for that reversal uh, possibility to be increased in here so quickly on what we get to observe here is um, the stock has dipped quite a little and you get to see that main action happening around the 12th and then followed on uh, all the way through so the macd here has been negative on two days it did test the positive region a little bit in the morning but it got rejected and it fell back down now the adx shows a little bit of a sloppy movement uh, that does support the current um macd uh, movement here um so all in all it does look like it's actually supporting it where it is trading sideways for the last two days but what we're expecting is that it would test that positive region sometime again tomorrow Perhaps not tomorrow because tomorrow is Friday and usually people want to uh, don't want to hold stocks over the weekend. But definitely by Monday, you should at least see a reversal uh, tomorrow. Now, William Person R here, we're seeing oversold stocks sitting in uh, for the second day straight, almost oversold. In the extended market, it's very easy to have overbought uh, due to a very much low volume. But in general, it's oversold. Momentum here seems to be a little bit choppy, sitting in below zero. Uh, moving averages here. This is something that is very dangerous that we're seeing um, and a lot of people never really notice it uh, the 50 sma and the 200 sma are touch are almost touching and if the 50 sma does fall does touch the 200 sma from the top that is a death star um, and usually you expect the price to dip a little bit even more that is on touch for it to be a little bit tomorrow by pre-market so that might be a little bit dangerous there uh my i'll 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 talk about how I'll play this a little bit after we go through the news. Uh, 30 EMA is above 10 SMA, so that is now bearish. Now, going on towards where the moving averages are, it's trading in the upper uh, region here between 299 and 268. If it falls below 268, expect it to play between 268 and 244. Now, going on towards Fibonacci retracements and current supports and resistances, what we get to see here is a little bit of a different movement. So... We get to see a current support sitting in. Well, I actually placed this on a little bit wrong. Let's try to fix it quick. So we're seeing here a little bit of a different movement. Um, the stock ha hasn't dipped quite a bit from what we've seen on the five-hour, sorry, five-day scale. Uh, the stock still looks uh, that it is holding the current, the price that it was before, above the two dollars. Uh, now, in terms of supports and resistances, here let's just draw quickly again. Uh, Fibonacci retracements, but before we do so in terms of different patterns and whatnot uh, Nothing significant comes in that hasn't played already. I mean, I do see uh, a bunch of bull flags uh, that has already played on uh, And so let's just move on to Fibonacci retracements and we see a support here at 262 uh, into Fibonacci support above that there is a support sitting in at 269 uh, above that Sorry, actually, I'm going to go supports and then resistances to not confuse anyone. Um, below that, I said 262 and Fibonacci retracement. And then 258. And then we're sitting at 253. And then we're seeing 2.5. And then 247. 245. 
And then we're seeing 238, 237, both traditional and Fibonacci retracements. And then we're seeing a um, little bit below around okay, so 237, 231, 229, and it goes down as we go down. So Fibonacci retracements, oh, sorry, resistances going on, traditional and Fibonacci retracements, we're seeing uh, 278 here, 28, um, we're seeing 283, 287, 2.9. Above that, we jump up a little bit to 297, to 292, 297, and then 299, and you get to see the rest from here. Going on towards where trend lines are, try to attempt to draw one here. Um, I would say it has broken the trend line both from the one yesterday and the one today. So it has a whole new trend line that is sitting in today. That's not definitely that's definitely not a good sign, but it's still holding in above the two dollar fifty. Uh, and that seems to be a really good uh, support that it was around here, around this region. Now, moving on towards earnings. Uh, just a quick thing. This stock has been beaten up by a little bit of earnings. Now, it did meet the earnings. So, the earning estimate was 0 0.3, negative 0 0.3. It did meet that. Uh, but on revenue, it fell a little bit short. But it did get a little bit of a beating around there. Now, looking towards news and companies overview so first i'm going to go through the earning report and then i'm going to go through the company's profile the earning report here what we get to see is the total assets has decreased just a little uh that's that's fine total liability has increased as well uh but the overall you've seen a total liability of equity that has decreased uh but when you go on to, when you go on to sales that has decreased uh from year to year uh, sorry year to year um what else we're looking at okay so the eps here so it's net loss of negative 0 0.3 compared to 0 0.33 now if we're looking at net loss not diluted pie shares we're going to look at 38,000 loss compared to 40,613 uh, i believe that is in thousands of dollars right so it's 38 million compared to 40 million um overall you're seeing 125 million compared to 124 million basic and diluted weighting average shares outstanding uh so it doesn't look like they have made a lot of use in the pandemic situation. And let me explain a little bit uh, more about the company's profile and what they have to uh, what they have. So corporate headquarters, their main one is in Boston. Now they do have uh, some states around the, uh, the some offices around the states. So California, Florida, uh, Texas, that's definitely in strategic places right now where COVID numbers are high. Uh, now, they do as well have international offices, for instance, China, Canada, and Ireland. Uh, although COVID cases are not as bad over there or numbers are not as uh, bad, bad over there. Next catalyst coming on is on August 20th. So that's in a week. Next week, Thursday. Uh, I don't have the exact times, but definitely if you click on register, you'll be able to find it out. It's um, yep, right here around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So after market. So exactly in just a week, minus two, uh, an hour and a half from this recording. Um, the idea of sorry the topic of the webinar is beyond re-entry navigating the new normal for leadership regarding basically the COVID-19 interruptions with schools um, and it basically it has a bit of a partnerships with uh, the AASA the Student Superintendents Association um, that's just more of a conference thing now going on towards customizing uh, or what they have to offer so they offer basically content homeschool home uh, homeschooling that's a different thing uh technology uh and so basically they have their own or they provide a curriculum for people to uh go on with now that is based on all all these states going on stuff like alabama alaska arizona i'm not going to go on through all of them but arizona's on there florida's on there uh what else texas uh california so that's a big hit ones uh they do offer learnings for um, or curriculums for for these states. Now, moving on, uh, key initiatives, of course, as I said, intro learning, intro learning, and learning resources, things like uh, online learning or online curriculum. Uh, they provide a global learning platform. Nothing significant here, but something that a little bit interested me that when they go on to countries and regions. Um, I don't see the U.S. even though I know they have the U.S. So that might confuse some people, but they do seem to offer, of course, uh, services in the U.S. So it's not only Peru, Latin America, Middle East, and Asia. Uh, that's something just I think missing on their website, or perhaps I thought maybe they thought it was uh, uh, basically implied. Um, going on quickly here. So yeah, I said they have their offices. 
one of the latest things you see here is that they have released uh, news on August 10th that the K-12, they support K-12 schools district nationwide as they prepare for remote and hybrid teaching and learning this fall. Now, when it comes into actual contracts, I haven't seen any contract news. Um, and here's how it compares to others in, in terms of its industry. But before we do that, let me quickly go on through institutional value, uh, institutional transactions. A little bit of mixed things here happening in August. There's definitely a lot of going on, uh, whether buy-ins or decreasing shares, and everyone is doing their own thing. Uh, the latest thing here, one that is bound to be a little bit to be interesting. They sold 100% of their shares and put and placed puts as options. So I think they just kind of gave up on the stock and said, said you know what, we're just gonna put puts on it and give <laughs> give our best. Um, but you get to see it as well here. Uh, definitely decrease of shares here. Uh, but at the same time, Tower Research Capital doubled their shares. Uh, Marshall decreased their shares. WS has averaged down, so they increased their shares by 2%, but the value changed by 2%, so that, I believe that's the average. Uh, bank here, I think, uh, well, they decreased their shares. Uh, calls here, and in decrease of shares. So honestly, what it looks like is it's a little bit mixed because you're getting institutional values that are buying and they're selling. Uh, they themselves are a little bit confused in terms of the movements, but it looks like it's mixed, so it's not bullish or bearish for the entire institutional market. Now, before moving forward back to how I'll play the stock, here's why I believe the stock is, uh, or this ticker is a bit more uh, well placed towards uh, compared to other uh, com competitors. And this really depends as well on states' uh, contribution to online learning, uh, as well as uh what kind of the kind of available funds for uh people in america so if unemployment still if unemployment goes up and doesn't go down and uh the average income uh still is on the decrease this ticker wouldn't see much benefit but what they offer is homeschooling and remote learning now from my understanding is that they have the teachers they have everything and it's basically an online school uh so that's my understanding through reading their website and through reading through resources and so they will get a they will get businesses for instance a lot of people especially let's say uh in different states let's say florida uh they're known to take a little bit off a different stance towards covid shutdowns and i do expect that for instance florida schools to open and that's just my speculation based on uh how the governor is hinting on uh states like that might push on schools to open in person and you know some parents might not be comfortable with that and then they would use something like hm uh, uh, the sticker here HMHC uh, so that's where they would get their earnings it's not more of like a blended learning program even though it is very possible um, and that still could be on there but that, that's how it raises out of the competition is that if it provides a full service basically gathering all now how would I play the stock uh, let's go on to words in one hour I definitely want to see it test that positive MACD uh, it's very much of a close to a buy for me towards uh friday i really want to see how what the action is and if it does dip quite further that might be a little bit dangerous for me because you see it does dip quite a bit but the market has been a little bit sloppy in the last two days or so so it's a little bit dangerous but i want to see it a little bit of a bullish kicker or at least a doji star before i enter in i would like to see that macd slow down and towards the negativeness I uh, would like to see the ADX stay on oversold for at least tomorrow so I can, for instance, buy on it. Uh, volumes, I would like to see a little bit of pick and volumes before I would like before I would like to jump in on this one. Uh, on the one hour, sorry, in terms of kind of where I see the stock going, uh, it definitely is testing a support. And I want to see that support to, to hold on uh, for a little. Uh, so what, what what is my entry price would be for this stock? Um, well, first of all, I want to see this trend line hold on and not dip down. Um, in terms of a support, I definitely want to see it hold that kind of support above the two point six dollars, um, as it, there seems to be a little bit of a drop below there. Uh, so if it does hold the two point six dollars, it's definitely considered a buy for me. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. You have a wonderful day.